suggest that Bernie Sanders, in fact, could have done much better than Hillary Clinton against Trump in some of the states that were crucial to the outcome of the election. We, 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 the people, we, the people. We have had election fraud. There's a lot at stake. Control of the American government, control of the economy, control of the military. When I mean, there's a lot at stake. Showed up to vote only to find their names were not on the list. We need to count all provisional ballots. They say shut the f***ing election down. We deny people the right to vote. Last speaker. All of these votes are placed in a black box. This black box is unaccountable. The exit polls were so far off the mark that they were, they were outside the margin of error, which is a chance of like one in 90 million. So is that something that should concern the American citizen? Clearly, there's a problem. Many Brooklyn residents who thought they were registered showed up to vote only to find their names were not on the list. There's a problem. shouldn't be changed 
to match what the stupid machines say. I'm not a basketball player, but I know when I see a basketball game, okay? If I saw two people rubbing their faces in a bowl of clam chowder, and I said, that's not a basketball game, would you respond, are you a professional NBA ref? <laughs> A misunderstanding as to how things are required to be conducted. Um, uh, sometimes there are uh, issues that, that need to be addressed and uh, we, we welcome uh, your criticism and your observations. Aww, do you welcome our observations? Our little observations and whimsical musings like we're Jerry Seinfeld. Have you ever noticed we live in a false democracy with the illusion of choice? What is the deal? This, this is how corporate tyranny works. It's anonymous and it's bland. It's bore. It looks like a, a dopey guy in an ugly tie going, Hmm, that's interesting that we uh, totally rigged these elections. Uh, that, is, that is something I'll look into one day. But this is just Chicago. To prove the primary is truly being stolen, you would need to show irregularities throughout several states. And I will do just that. This is where the story starts to get a little weird. This, this, this is where the story starts to get a little weird. So in order to prove election fraud goes beyond Chicago, we need some way to show that the people are voting in a manner that is different than what's being reported. Ah, exit polls. The exit poll company Edison Research, which does all our primaries, tells us that the margin of error for a 95% confidence interval is plus or minus 4%. So let's see if any of the primary states in the Sanders-Clinton race varied more than 4%. Because if they do, something is very wrong. Let's see. Arkansas varied 6.7%. Alabama, 15.7%. Tennessee, 8.8%. Georgia, 12.4%. Texas, 9.9%. Massachusetts, 7.8%. Oklahoma, 6.8%. Mississippi, 10.4%. Ohio, 10%. And New York, 12%. Did a blind monkey with an abacus run this election? <laughs> Exit polls are even used by the U.S. State Department to measure election integrity in other nations. Exit polls are even used by the U.S. State Department to measure election integrity in other nations. In fact, in some other countries, if the exit polls are off by more than 2%, people flip out. Things are set on fire. But here in the U.S., who gives a f Good! Am I right? 12% deviation in New York ain't no thing, man. So, wow, wow. Maybe the exit polls are off because this is not a fair election. Maybe Bernie won so many caucus states because they can't be rigged with machines. But instead of looking into that, the Washington Post ran with the headline, You need to chill out, Tim Robbins. <laughs> really? Tim Robbins needs to chill out? The Washington Post ran 16 negative stories on Bernie Sanders in 16 hours. Jesus. Relax, guys. Your bias is showing. You're trying to defend a system that has recently been rated by a Harvard study as the worst in the Western world for fair elections. That sucks for you. Those of us who connect the dots between the exit polls, we threaten the system. And it won't be safe until we're removed or shut up. We have to fight back. So the exit polls don't seem to match up to the voting machine tallies. Isn't that odd? To make it more enjoyable, as I talk about it, I'm going to put adorable cut puppies up on this screen there. And I think we'll get through this. We'll get through this together. Yeah? <laughs> so the exit polls don't seem to match up to the voting machine tallies. Isn't that odd? And the voting machines all seem, <laughs> all seem to tend towards Hillary Clinton, while the exit polls all seem to tend towards Bernie Sanders. Isn't that odd? <laughs> and in nine of those contests, those exit polls were so far off, they were way outside the margin of error. The odds of that happening by chance are one in 90 million. The odds of that happening by chance are one in 90 million. 90 million. 90, 90 million. Isn't 
that odd. Something egregious happened. Over 100,000 voters were accidentally, accidentally knocked off the rolls in Brooklyn, New York. Isn't that odd? But this certainly has nothing to do with Hillary Clinton's campaign. No, the person to blame is Chief Clerk Diane Hazlett Rudiano. But in order to show she did it to help Hillary Clinton, we'd have to show she's had some kind of contact with Clinton or Clinton supporters. And, and that just, that just isn't good. Oh, what, what's this on this newspaper from 2014 that I always keep by my desk? <laughs> In September of 2014, the Wall Street Journal wrote about a dilapidated Upper West Side brownstone that was sold to a developer. The place's floors had collapsed and stonework cracked. Over the years, neighbors complained about graffiti, garbage, and rats. One neighbor even, even put up a rat crossing sign. Anyway, this place, this place is a dump. Nobody would ever buy... Oh! The property sold for $6.6 million, $1.1 million over the 2013 market value. Isn't that up? <laughs> the owner of the home is one Diane Hazlett Rudiano, who paid $5,000 for it in 1976. That's the same name as that other person. <laughs> that is odd. She wasn't even trying to sell the place. She was, she was just approached by a buyer offering six and a half million dollars. Maybe the buyer was a rat collector. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But alas, this still has nothing to do with the Clinton camp. Oh, wait. <laughs> the buyer of the property was an investment group headed by Dana Lowey Lutway, daughter of U.S. Representative Nita Lowey, a superdelegate for one Hillary goddamn Clinton. <laughs> Isn't that odd? <laughs> take all the credit for finding out the details of this stolen election. But alas, it wasn't me. It was Election Justice USA, a national nonpartisan team of seasoned election integrity experts, attorneys, statisticians, and journalists put out a hundred page, it's a hundred pages, extensively researched report on how the primary election was not legit. Meanwhile, the Democratic National Convention went on as usual. Multiple reports have shown that Hillary did much better in areas with provably hackable voting machines. And we see this in state after state. And the exit polls were way off for many of the Democratic primaries. But on the Republican side, they were almost perfect. As Election Justice USA put it, this is remarkable. As the exit polls for both parties were conducted on the same day, in the same precincts, with the same interviewers, and used the same methodologies. Okay, Arizona, you experienced voter suppression on a level practically never seen before. Stand up and fight, my brothers and sisters. I am proud to be joined here by Jerry Ammon, age 102. <laughs> Madam Secretary, Arizona cast 34 votes for Senator Sanders. And 51 votes for the next president of the United States of America, Hillary Rodham Oh, come on! That's not fair! She's fucking adorable! You can't steal an election with a 102-year-old! Do they not care that in Maricopa County, Arizona, which covers Phoenix, 140 out of 200 polling locations, 70% were eliminated, leaving only one voting center for every 21,000 voters. Who's to blame for this, these long lines? Well, the voters for getting in line. At least three lawsuits have been brought by various organizations as a result of these actions. But that wasn't enough to make Hillary the victor. That didn't do it. Available evidence from Arizona, New York, and California suggests more than 500,000 registrations were tampered with or improperly handled. The percentage of purged voters was a significant predictor of Clinton's vote share. So they targeted Sanders voters and then purged them from the rolls, like the 120,000 kicked off in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, New York will say something. They don't take no shit from nobody. The state of New York pledges 108 delegates to 
to Senator Bernie Sanders and applauds him for his call for unity for all Democrats. And New York State pledges 181 delegates for the next president of the United States, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Well, yeah, we thank Bernie Sanders for shutting the fuck up. Just shut up and let us feel this thing. Please. Please. All right. What about Ohio? Ohio is now the location of a federal lawsuit saying Bernie Sanders got more pledged delegates than we were told. The suit seeks the release of raw exit polling data, which documents dramatic differences between exit polls and electronic vote totals in 11 states. Surely the Ohio delegates will stand up against these results coming from voting machines made of Tootsie Pops. <laughs> the great state of Ohio proudly casts 62 votes for Senator Bernie Sanders and 98 votes for the next president of the United States, Hillary Clinton. Okay, how about Illinois? They got to see election fraud up close and personal. Witnesses saw the machines adding votes to Hillary Clinton in the audit, in the audit process, and they brought their testimony to the Chicago Board of Elections, who cared about as much as Jack Nicholson cares about winning another Golden Globe. All right, he, he shows up to the Oscars in a bathrobe. He doesn't care. And there's a lawsuit about that fraud as well, which is currently pending. It's been brought on behalf of voters and monitors, seeks class action status, a declaratory judgment, and an injunction. It charges that the actions of the Board of Elections officials violated the fundamental right to vote. It's quite likely the people of this country voted for Bernie Sanders. Election Justice USA has established an upper estimate of 184 pledged delegates lost by Senator Bernie Sanders as a consequence of specific irregularities and instances of fraud. With a shift of that many delegates, Bernie Sanders would have won the pledged delegate race. But who are these, these, these election justice USA people anyway? Probably meth addicts, internet trolls, right? <laughs> Pedophile priests. That's the only type of people who would say things like, I find the results of the 2016 primary voting unusual. In fact, I found the patterns unexpected and even suspicious said Fritz Schuren, the 100th president of the American Statistical Association. Oh, well, maybe he does math on the weekend, all right? You don't know. Election justice concluded by calling for decertification of the 2016 Democratic primary results in every state in which they have established a reasonable doubt as to the accuracy of the vote tally. I was there this week with protesters who were furious with what was going on inside. The theft of our democracy, the tearing limb from bloody limb of our election system. And to CNN's credit, to CNN's credit, for once, for, for, for once, they had their priorities straight and they covered it. They are laying down in front of the entrance. They are letting police through. And the police, if you look over this way. All right, Miguel, thank you so much. We're going to cut you off right, we're gonna cut you off right now. We're going to cut you off right now. Uh, we're going to uh, cover right now Voice to Men. Philadelphia Zone is here. <laughs> Don't look at the protesters, America. Pay attention to this 90s doo-wop group. But not everyone inside that hall for the DNC took it so quietly. One group unfurled a giant banner above Joe Biden that read election fraud. Yeah, they did. They did. However, however, when I posted that image on my Facebook page, Facebook took it down, literally, and said it violated Facebook standards. Oh, really? Uh, what, what standards are those? The, the don't say anything of substance clause of my user agreements? The first female nominee of a major political party could have been a momentous occasion. But until we have legitimate elections, 
We have nothing. So this is the no party preference Democratic crossover ballot. As you can see, total vote count, it says zero. So it has zero for presidential preference, zero for Senate, zero for all these things. Want to see how many ballots were actually in the box for this? Oh, all those ballots. So we have 39 no party preference Democratic ballots. These were stuck into the machine today and none of these are counted on the report. Obviously, as you can see from what's showing, a dominant number of those are for Bernie Sanders. Polls do suggest that Bernie Sanders, in fact, could have done much better than Hillary Clinton against Trump in some of the states that were crucial to the outcome of the election. This Hillary Clinton, the idealist, liberal, trustworthy person, no longer exists. This pro-fracking neoconservative who literally works for Goldman Sachs stole the election from Bernie Sanders and then threw the election to Donald Trump. It's Hillary's Trump!